In this lesson, we're going to work with transition metals where you are going to be given a name. So for example, iron. Now because iron is a transition metal, remember transition metals are mostly these ones in this block over here. Sometimes people also include these ones over here, but I'm just mostly going to focus for this block, okay? So that, because it's that, because it's a, a transition uh, metal, they will always give it to you with a Roman numeral like that, and then they'll say chloride. So we now need to go and find the formula, okay? So if you look at this, that's iron, okay? So that's Fe. Because it's got a two over there, that means it's a positive two, because metals always have a positive charge. And then chloride, we know from the valency numbers, minus two, minus one. Chloride is over here, so chloride is negative one. Okay, now we know how to put a metal and a non-metal together. You're just gonna, um, you're gonna take this number and put it there, and take that number and put it there. We've looked at that in previous lessons, so now you can just put them together like that. And then what we've spoken about before is that when this number is a one, you can just ignore it, and so we can just end up with that. FeCl2. Let's do a few more examples. So our next example is going to also be iron chloride, but now it's going to be iron 3 chloride. Okay, so we know that that's a Fe. Because it's got a Roman numeral of 3, that means it's got a valency of 3, uh, whereas in the previous example it had a valency of 2. And then chloride, once again, is going to have a valency of negative 1. So we can just say negative 1. Now we can take this 1 and put it there, and take the 3, put it there, and so that gives us Fe with a little 1 and a Cl3. But because it's a 1, you can ignore it, and then you just write it like that. Our next example is going to be copper. Now, copper is Cu, okay? So it's a transition metal, so it needs to have a Roman numeral, and then we're going to use sulfur. So that would be copper sulfide. So that's this one over here. So the, because of the Roman numeral 2, that means that the copper valency is positive 2. And then sulfur, if we look at its valency, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. That would be negative 2. So when you put them together, that's going to be Cu2, because remember that number goes there and that number goes there, which we've looked at before. You end up with that. But I wonder if you can remember, when these numbers can simplify, you must simplify them. So that could actually end up becoming Cu1S1. But when there's only a 1, you don't write anything. And so this would actually just end up being Cus, which is copper sulfide. Our next example will be chromium. So chromium is Cr over there. And so that's a transition metal, so we're going to give it a Roman numeral of 3, for example, and then let's combine that with oxygen. So we'll say chromium oxide. So chromium is Cr. Because of the 3, that means its valency is plus 3. Oxygen, so we'll put an O, is, uh, if we look at oxygen's valency, 3, 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, that's going to be negative 2. And so if you then had to put those numbers, let's put them a little bit closer, actually. If you then had to put those numbers across like we normally do, then that's going to give you Cr2O3. And then our last example, let's use cobalt. So cobalt chloride. But let's use uh, cobalt is this one, so it's a transition. So I need to give you a Roman numeral. And then let's go chloride. Okay, so cobalt is CO, and it's got a Roman numeral of 2, so that means it's got a valency of plus 2, and then chloride is negative 1. So now you put the 2 over here, and you put the 1 over there, and so you end up with CO1, CO2. But when there's a 1, you don't have to put anything, so you actually just end up with CO, CO2.